Normally, we would be reviewing all the Batman comics, but I got to be honest with you, Batman Catwoman number 11 was really bad. Batman 89 number 5 was also terrible, and I just don't want to talk about them. There's only one issue left in both series. We'll hit them on the flip side with our good friend Josh McDonald, the Batman historian, the DC Comics aficionado. So we're going to just review Flashpoint Beyond number 0, which is an interesting comic book. I definitely recommend it. We got Jeff Johns, Eduardo Rizzo on here. How you doing, Josh? Uh, I'm I'm doing well. I'm not going to lie. I, I read comics and reached out and was like, hey, what the hell are we going to talk about? Because Batman sucks this week. Uh, so I'm glad we're not talking about Batman. Uh, I'm happy to be talking about Flashpoint Beyond number zero. And uh, I'm curious. We haven't discussed this yet. So I'm curious to get your take on it. Absolutely. And there's some really interesting stuff here. There's obviously going to be things that you caught that I missed and I caught that you missed because there are so many Easter eggs and little bitty hints and, and things that are put into this comic book. It's fascinating. There are a few issues with it, but we're going to talk about basically the main storyline. We're not going to give away a lot of spoilers here, but by the end, and we'll let you know when the spoilers are going to be coming in hot and heavy as we talk about some of the really big events in the comic book itself, we'll let you know. Yep. So getting into Flashpoint Beyond Number Zero, before we get into the writing of Jeff Johns, I do want to talk about the art from Eduardo Rizzo. It doesn't start out all that great, but it gets much worse as the comic book goes along. And by the end, the faces were really screwed up. They were really jacked up. And I just don't think the art was good enough for the quality of the writing in this book. I completely agree. I thought the art was was rough. Uh, and that's that's me being nice. It, it There were moments reading this book that it reminded me of uh, The Dark Knight Returns 2. And, and that's never a good place that I want to go mentally when looking at art. So I was I was really, you know, turned off by the art in this book. Yeah, it definitely doesn't live up to the story that it's that it's actually telling here. But mm -hmm. Jeff Johns is a really fascinating job. Obviously, this is has a lot to do with Flashpoint itself, but it's also talking a lot about the current state of the DC universe. So apparently we have Batman. I'm not really sure where he is, but he's not mm -hmm. really in our timeline. He's off somewhere else, and he's apparently realized something's wrong with the timelines, and he's discovered the omniverse and linear time and the dark multiverse and he's trying to figure out this mystery so we have that aspect of the story he ends up i guess recruiting marionette and mime yep. with the promise that he's going to you know reunite them with their child if they aid him in finding this artifact to kind of unravel this mystery i think one of the big questions i have is, is what you just mentioned i'm trying to figure out where this batman is because when i read this and i saw marionette and mime i immediately was like are, is the, are these the three from doomsday clock or is this something different and it's it's not a bad question it's an intriguing question like i'm curious to see where this goes and exactly what's unfolding here and yeah we, we kind of pick back up with the flashpoint as we knew flashpoint when flashpoint was flashpoint which might sound confusing but there's been a lot of shit going on between the original flashpoint and now um so that created some intrigue as well you mentioned the flashpoint story that one's a little bit different we have thomas yeah. wayne obviously the villain essentially of the first flashpoint and he is aware that his universe died and was fixed by by barry allen he knows he's not supposed to be there he knows that his son was saved and he wants to end where he is because it's not supposed to exist but somebody has gone out of their way to recreate the flashpoint universe and he doesn't know who and, and then we have more stuff even kind of going beyond that that uh he remembers past flashpoint he remembers the his world getting pretty much destroyed ending uh but he got pulled from time to to have you know unfortunately tom king's batman run more, more recently what joshua williamson was doing with them and uh was it justice league um incarnate incarnate there we go i started to say infinite and those freaking that freaking app uh but yeah just a sleeping garnet so you know now he he's kind of like uh putting pieces together i guess uh just as we are but he, he gets thrown back into this world and uh it, it's it's a smart storytelling move on jeff john's part because as as thomas is trying to figure things out we're also trying to figure things out so it puts us on the same page which is it, it's just it's just a smart strategy and it's very easy to to pick out that this story has continued from when mm -hmm. we stopped it because we've seen the fallout from everything that happened in flashpoint and the big reveals and people have gone insane and kids have died and stuff like that so that's essentially what the two main stories are we have our batman somewhere we're not really sure where to get this artifact because he needs to do something about time which has been destroyed seemingly at this point and we have thomas wayne Flashpoint Batman in his own time realizing it's not supposed to exist and wanting to fix that. So those are the two main stories. 
Now let's get into some more spoiler territory. There's some really interesting events that happen here, specifically talking about Barry Allen. He is not the Flash in nope. this universe. Thomas Wayne knows he's supposed to be the Flash, so he brings him out there, and there's this really intense, insane moment where essentially he kidnaps him, and he's going to recreate the experiment that created Flash to begin with, strapping him to an electric chair, getting the chemicals ready, and he's going to have him struck by lightning, and you know Barry Allen is scared out of his mind. He doesn't know he's supposed to be the Flash. He doesn't know any of this exists. He just knows that this guy's trying to kill him. It's absolutely insane. It, it's super insane. I mean, let's be honest. Thomas Wayne is is not uh, the prodigy of mental health. Uh, you know, he's always kind of been a little bit off and a little bit extreme. I think Tom King took that to an extreme, extreme when he wrote him. But, uh, you know, I, I think from Thomas's standpoint, he knows this isn't right. He knows this needs to be fixed and he knows how to fix it. So he's going to like try once to see if he can get Barry to comply. Maybe he can't. He's just going to make it happen. And that's that's what he's doing. He's he's just taking action to turn Barry back into the flash. And uh, things don't go according to plan. No, they do not, because the chemicals themselves are are broken by yep. somebody like a type of sniper that's trying to ruin the event. And he still gets struck by lightning. And essentially he gets fried like a free piece of bacon right there in front of Thomas Wade. And there is no Barry Allen. There's no potential for a Flash in this universe anymore. Yep. Nope. The uh, the potential for Flash is is gone. He is toast. Uh, it reminds me of that famous line from the movie X Men. It came out in two thousand. The dude's <laughs> the dude's a piece of burnt toast sitting in a chair. You know, his eyeballs are probably all popped out. So. And we've got uh, Dent essentially running down on Flashpoint Batman, and something happens there, and he's like blowed up, and his son witnesses it. And then in the background, we do see the silhouette, or at least a hint, that there is a Flash. I want to touch on the Harvey Dent thing real quick because uh, you know Har- Harvey Dent gets he gets killed, he's blown up, his son does not get killed somehow, some way, and uh, I think Flashpoint Batman saves him. Right? He oh. saw what was happening and jumped down there and pulled him out of the car. Oh, yes. I think you might be right. But then I see Bruce like asking what's going to happen to this kid. And I was like, oh, shit, here we go. We're going to have another Robin in the mix. Jesus Christ. (laughs) Um, But yeah, no, there is another flash. We see, uh, you know, yellow flash kind of like uh, pass by rather quickly. He he whispers to Bruce or not Bruce, but Thomas. He whispers to Thomas. So that'll that's undoubtedly going to play out over the next few issues. Obviously, this wasn't a zero issue. It's supposed to be a table setter and really get you ready for the story going back to Flashpoint, but also talk about 5G being averted and all these things. There are a ton <laughs> of Easter eggs. Are there any other things that really stood out in your mind? Like, I'm really interested why they put that in there, or that was a really cool callback to some DC Comics history. Uh, I, I mean, there, there, there's just like stuff all over, and I feel like I need to go back and look at it. Uh, right away, you have just the chalkboard. You know, the the top thing here, and it's just what everyone's talking about, is is you've got 5G averted and it's like marked through. And like, uh, I think it's just more so Jeff Johns just taking a dig at Dan DiDio. Like, you've seen this back and forth between the way the new 52 started and then the creation of Pandora. And then when you transferred into Rebirth, you had Jeff Johns immediately just kill Pandora, which was like the sign of the new 52. And then now we've got this as well. Um, it, like, that was interesting. Even the board itself and dealing with things kind of remind me of Dan DiDio's board that has famously had pictures of that's popped up on you know like not liking legacy characters and all that i again there's there's so many easter eggs and teases at things that it's going to be curious to see what's there um there there are even some very minor alterations from uh what had happened in the original flashpoint story partially because we're continuing from that point I'm really curious to see what they do. And I, I think the big question I still have is just the, the Batman in the beginning that's with Mime and Marionette. Which which Batman is this? And is this going to tie into uh, Doomsday Clock in any way? Because it, it appears that it is. My big question is, what is the point of the series? And I don't mean that in a mocking way. It feels like it's supposed to be a callback to Flashpoint, when it should, yeah. certainly is. And when you see Mime and Marionette, you're like, okay, this certainly says something about Doomsday Clock. But when you see the board and we see everything that's going on, we got Dark Crisis coming up. Mm -hmm. Is this going to connect into that? It almost feels like it has to, that this Batman is going to play a part in this big crisis that's happening right now or about to happen. Yeah, I mean, it definitely feels like it's going to. I don't I don't think that Josh Williamson would have used Thomas Wayne and Justice League Incarnate not to have there be some type of relevance or tie in here. So I I think you're going to see some type of connection. Um, 
I, you know, and, and that's the crazy thing is reading this. This issue just felt like an Elseworld story, which is fine. But yeah, I'm with you. I don't know what the point is. I'm curious to see what the point is. I think they're going to try to make Dark Crisis as big as possible. And I think if they can tie to as many other previous events as they can, or at least nod to them, it's going to help give it some type of momentum. Uh, whether or not it actually pays off, we will see. I think fans of Flashpoint itself, if you like the Flashpoint event, maybe you haven't read DC in a while, I think you're going to like this comic book. It might not have the greatest art in the world, but the story is going to feel relevant to you, and I think you're going to like and feel good about a lot of aspects of it. I do really feel after reading it that it's going to be far more relevant Mm. to the DC comics we're reading today and the story that's being told, loosely being told, because not everything feels like it's connected right now. But I do think it's going to play a pivotal part, so I was really surprised about that. I I definitely recommend it. I don't think it's the greatest comic book in the world. It is a zero issue, so those are normally a little bit slower paced. I give this like a four out of five. You know, it's it's like right there, like a highly recommend, but it's not the greatest thing in the world. Agreed. It's not the greatest. Uh, I mean, Jeff John's writing is always solid and he understands the characters well and he knows how to build and craft a story. Um, It was good enough that it makes me I'm actually wanting to go back and pick up the Flashpoint books again. Because there's so many minor details, especially from the, the tie-in side titles, that I'm, I'm trying to remember that I'm fuzzy on, that it makes me want to go pick those up and read them again. So it, it does a good job of making me feel invested. Uh, my hesitation is Jeff Johns isn't writing the next couple issues. So we'll see how that turns out. He is co-writing with Jeremy Adams, the writer on The Flash, who's been really, really solid. But he's also co-writing with Tim Sheridan, who's been writing yeah. the... Uh, I don't know the, the the Teen Titans abomination that thing oh, that comic book that's finally over. That thing was terrible. So Burn it. I imagine he outlines the rest of the story, and these guys are finishing it off with dialogue and stuff like that. Yeah, that does cause me some worry. But hopefully, Jeff Johns is a big enough talent, and he's smart enough not to let anything get out in publish that isn't good. We know they had to make some changes to the publication schedule. It sounded like. They ended up having to overprint Flashpoint Beyond and overship it because it wasn't as ordered as much as they thought it would be. And then they changed the, the release dates on it mm. to kind of build up momentum for the title. So it does sound like it was struggling to begin with. But I do think a lot of people, if they get into this, once these details get out, I think a lot of people will go back and read it. Agreed. Agreed. As Josh was mentioning earlier, Jeff Johns was the architect of Rebirth, but it was destroyed by Dan Didio. The two have had a rivalry, a friendly rivalry, maybe not so friendly, within DC Comics for a very long time. Obviously, Dan Didio's God. Definitely check this video out, and we can talk about the the death of DC Rebirth, which I think a lot of people really enjoyed. Why did it have to happen? When did it happen? And really, what were the key factors? I think you'll enjoy this video.